Hello all. So this video goes through the sixth question of the first class called mechanics homework. Before we get into how to solve the problem, let's go over some of the needed math. So this will be especially useful for those of you who have not had linear algebra before. So to begin with, I want to go over what a transpose is. So given a matrix that looks like this, taking the transpose of it simply means you take the columns of the matrix and then convert them into rows. So for example, if the first column of my matrix looks like this, the first row of its transpose will be the same elements in the same order. You take the second column of your original matrix to make the second row of your transpose, and you take the third column of your original matrix to make the third row of your transpose. So something important to note here is that while the columns become rows, the elements on the diagonal do not change. So taking a transpose leaves the diagonal untouched. The second linear algebra concept I want to cover is matrix multiplication. So given two matrices A and B, you want to multiply them together to form one singular matrix C. So there's a little bit of criteria for how to do this. To start off with, the number of columns in your first matrix has to be the same as the number of rows in your second matrix. So if you write out the dimension of your matrix in row times column form, this means that the inner number here or the number of columns has to match the inner number here or the number of rows. And additionally, the size of the output of the matrix will be Two, uh, two rows and three columns are the remaining two numbers. So that's something to important re to remember when you're multiplying matrices together. These inner numbers have to match. And now to go about matrix multiplication, while it sounds hard, it's just a bunch of dot products. So to find the element of the matrix that goes in the first row, first column, you simply do the dot product of the first row of the first matrix and the first column of the second matrix. So that dot product will look something like this. Similarly, if you want to do find the matrix element that's down here, so that's going to be the second row, second column, you go across the second row of the first matrix and down the second column here. And if I want to do another matrix element, like let's say I want to do this one, that would be, it's in the first row. So I take the first row here and it's in the third column. So I take the third column here. Something I like to remember when I'm doing matrix multiplication is across then down. That means you go across on the first matrix and down on the second matrix when you're doing the dot product. So one last thing to note here is matrix indexing, or this also works for vectors. Up here, I index the matrices starting from zero, but down here, I index the matrices starting from one. Both of these are correct ways to denote matrices, though I find starting from zero to be more useful, especially for our programming, because all of Python's lists and arrays and such start from zero. So now moving on to solving the problem. The first part wants you to take the transpose of the matrix R, which is a rotation matrix. So to do that, we simply write down R, T, and I underline variables which represent matrices to tell them apart, kind of like you put an arrow over a, a variable for a vector to make sure you can tell it's a vector. So first, you know that the diagonal doesn't change. So I'm gonna go ahead and write down my diagonal elements. Next, you know that the first column here will become the first row in the transpose. So I can fill that in. So that'd be cosine, negative sine, and zero. The second column here will become the second row of the transpose. So if I fill that in, that's gonna be sine, cosine, zero. And then lastly, the final column will become the final row of the transpose such just zero, zero, one. 
So not too hard. There's no math. You just have to rearrange the matrix. So part B wants you to prove that the transpose rotation matrix times the original rotation matrix is one. And so just as a check, the transpose has three rows and three columns. The original matrix has three rows and three columns. These two numbers match, so I can multiply these matrices together. All right, so to do so, I'm going to start with the first element. So I'm going to start with this one. So that's first column, first row. So across the first row, down the first column. And I just take the dot product. So cosine times cosine is cosine squared plus negative sine times negative sine, so that's sine squared, and then zero times zero is zero. Next, if I wanna do this one, so that's the first column, sorry, first row, but second column, cosine times sine is cosine sine, And then I'm gonna have negative sine and cosine, so minus cosine sine. And then zero times zero, so zero. Next, this last element here, that would be the dot product of the first row and the last column. So that's cosine times zero plus negative sine times zero plus zero times one. So that whole element is just zero. And so you repeat that same process for all other matrix elements. So let me just erase the highlighter so it'll be easier to see what I'm doing. Okay, so for the second row here, I wanna do the second row here, but the first column. So that's gonna be sine times cosine, which is just cosine theta sine, and then minus sine, cosine, and then plus zero times zero, so zero. Next, for this element, I also want to do this row, but it's going to be this column now. So sine times sine is sine squared, plus cosine times cosine is cosine squared, plus zero times zero, which is zero. Finally, for this one here, I do the second row, last column. So sine times zero is zero, cosine times zero is zero, zero times one is zero, so that one's just zero. All right, and then again, let me erase the highlighter so you can more easily see what I'm doing. All right, so for the last one, so I want the bottom row first column. So that cosine times zero is zero, sine times zero is zero, zero times one is zero, so that's just zero. For the second matrix element, same row, but the next column, and we also have zero times sine is zero, zero times cosine is zero, one times zero is zero, so that one's also just zero right out the gate. And finally, for the last element here, last row, last column, zero times zero plus zero times zero plus one times one, that whole element is one. Okay, so it doesn't quite look like the identity matrix we want, but we're getting pretty close here. So cosine squared plus sine squared, if you remember your trig identities, this is just one. So I can replace that with one and I can replace this with one. In addition, it's pretty easy to see that this term is zero and this term is zero. So if I plug all those in, I have one, zero, zero going across the top, zero, one, zero for the second row and zero, zero, one for the last row, which is the identity matrix. So a quick note on the identity matrix. You can see it written most often as an I, 
I like to write it as a one with an extra bar on it, just because it kind of acts like a one in regular math. So might as well make it look like a one with matrices. The little subscript three here indicates that it's an identity matrix of three, but you can have an identity matrix as, as big or as small as you want. But no matter what the size is, the common feature is you'll have ones on the diagonal and zeros everywhere else. You can also write this using delta notation like this. So this is called a delta ij. What this means is that this gives a one if i and j are the same number, and it gives a zero if i and j are different numbers. And i and j are simply the indices of the matrix element. So for example, this matrix element here corresponds to indices zero, zero. Zero is equal to zero, so the delta gives you one. But for this matrix element here, the indices are zero and one. Zero is not equal to one, so the delta gives you zero. So that's, you may see that notation in the future, just so you're familiar with it. So Morton also asks you to interpret what this means. And having the rotation matrix, uh, it's transpose times the original matrix means that the dot product is conserved under this rotation. So let me prove that to you. So we're going to start with the matrix B that we define to be the rotation matrix times some other vector R. And now I want to know what the dot product of B is. So B times B can also be written as B transpose B. So that's going to be equal to RA transpose RA. Using this identity I wrote down up here, I can figure out that the transpose of R times A is simply A transpose R transpose. And then I'll have an R A. But I know from the this problem that R transpose R is simply the identity matrix. You can think of that as a one. So it no longer factors into the calculations. So I simply end up with A transpose A, which means that B transpose B is equal to A transpose A. So the dot product is conserved. So the final part here wants you to write down a rotation matrix about the x-axis. So the rotation matrix given to you in this problem is a rotation about the z-axis, meaning that the xy plane changes, but the z plane does not. And you can kind of tell this from just looking at the matrix. The only so the element down here, uh, if we think of this sort of going across as x, y, z and x, y, z, where z and z intersect is a one. We want to keep the z component the same. And we don't want anything else to change the z component. So that whole z column is zero and the rest of the z row is zero. We only want rotations to happen in the x, y plane which is what these four elements here do, which are only occur where X and Y intersect. So let's see if we can take that general knowledge and make a new rotation matrix, but only around the X axis. So to start out with, it seems like our rotation matrix around the X axis would have a one where X overlapped with X. So in that first spot there, and then zeros here, and then zeros here. So that would kind of be the same as the yellow from above. And then the only thing left to do is just take these four matrix elements as are here and copy them straight down into this empty space. So I'll have cosine of phi, sine of phi, negative sine of phi, cosine of phi. Finally, it does ask you to find out what the rotation matrix would be with a phi of 90. So if you plug that in with, uh, with 90 degrees, you get one, zero, zero across the top, zero. The cosine of 90 is zero. The sine of 90 is one. 
zero, the sine of 90 is one, so that's negative one total, and the cosine of 90 is zero. So this here would be a rotation matrix around the x-axis with an angle of 90. So I know this is a little, this is linear algebra. Some of you may not be familiar with it, but if you're not familiar with it, don't worry. You won't see linear algebra too much in this class. This is just sort of an introduction. So you're a little bit familiar with it. If you still have any questions, please don't hesitate to contact myself or Jeremy, and we'll do our best to make sure we can clear up any problems you may still have.